Hello, this is Christy. Thank you for joining me in this very quick tutorial for Camtasia. I'm going to show you how you can create an animated beacon like those uh, circles that you can show on a map to highlight a location or to show how someone is traveling on a map or something like that. It's very easy to do in Camtasia and we will only use things that are native to Camtasia, no external graphics apart from the map. So I'm going to import a map later, but just to show you how to create the beacon, this is from a question on my YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you enjoy my tutorials. And now let's see the tutorial. So go to annotation. I have a new project here, of course, make sure you you change the project size and the, the screen size from the project settings to what you need it to be. And at the end, then go to the annotations on the left, go to annotation, go to shapes. And if you don't see all these shapes, you can use this drop down to change it to all. And now I'm going to use a circle, but you can probably reproduce this with any kind of shape really. So I'm going to drag this circle here onto the canvas like so. It doesn't matter what size it is because you can change it uh, later. We will, we're going to turn this into a nice reusable component. And what we want to do is with this circle, we want to maybe change the color to something like, let's make it white or slightly light gray like this. And what we want to do is this part of the beacon is going to be static, but there's going to be another one that kind of fades in and out from the center and kind of becomes larger and repeats that animation. So that is very easy to do. Go to the timeline on the bottom and you decide how long you want the animation to last. Maybe half a second or one second. Maybe it's too slow. So let's see if I want to go like this, that should be enough. So about a second, right? So in um, this timeline, I'm just going to zoom in again and I'm going to make a copy of this clip, right? So everything is at the center of the screen. We can move it later. No problem. So select this clip here and you can make a copy of it. Copy and paste. Control V and let's synchronize it with the main clip. So now we have two circles on the canvas. I'm going to change the color of the clips so that this first one is going to actually be maybe green just so that we can distinguish them before we animate. We can put the color back to uh, the white color. So now the bottom clip is not visible because it's uh, it's the same size. I'm going to click on the top clip and hold down the control and shift key and just scale it down like this. Now this is the part where we create the animation. We will animate the bottom clip to kind of come in from underneath the green one and scale up, but also at the same time fade out so that it's kind of pulsating like a beacon thing. So um, let's zoom in a bit. And now I want to change this clip on the bottom, the white one. I want to remove the fill first of all. So go on to the properties on the right side and you have two opacity controls, one for the fill and one for the outline. So I'm going to turn the opacity way down for the fill. You don't see it anymore because there is no border. So I'm going to change the thickness of the border back to about this size. So about 14 pixels or so. Depending on the size, you may want to do like 10 pixels or less or more. So this is the uh, clip that is now on the timeline. I'm, I'm leaving the opacity to 100% for the outline and let's animate this now. So first of all, let's uh, zoom in here and hold down the control and shift keys and just put this scale it down to until it disappears like this. And now this is the part where we animate this. We can go to animations, go to animations tab and use a custom animation. Just drag it onto the white clip like so. And you can notice the end of the animation, hold down the control and shift key and scale this object like so. So this is the part where I want it to, to disappear. Okay, so the animation is scaling it up. You see, you see like this, it's coming up like that. Let's see if it's fast enough. Okay, maybe it's too slow. If it's too slow, you can pull the animation back like this. So you can see, but here is where I want it to fade out. So you can either fade it out at the same time. So keeping the playhead on the keyframe at the end there, it's, it's, it's making the end of that arrow red. I can also change the opacity to zero. So look what happens now. 
it's fading out and scaling up at the same time. Now, if it's too fast, it is a little fast, I can expand the animation to last longer. And you can see now it's fading out. Now, if you want it to animate without fading out and then fade out, you can do two animations. So make the initial animation shorter, put the opacity back to 100. So now the clip only scales up. But then I want it to fade as soon as it's finished scaling. So I can add another animation here, custom animation, right after the first one, make this one shorter, and then make the opacity zero, which means it's going to scale up and then fade out. Let's see it. Yeah, so that's another way to do it. But if you want it to keep scaling while it's fading, you can also add a little bit more scaling here. I know you can't see it, but uh, just make it slightly larger like that. So now it's going to actually still continue to scale while fading out. So there's a, you know, two animations there. Let's see how it works. Yeah, I think I'm happy with this. If you want the fading to be uh, kind of shorter, you can adjust any of these animations, right? So now this is great. The, the, the beacon is pulsating. Okay, so this is just happening once. What we want to do is we want to repeat this as many times as we need for whatever animation purposes we want. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just crop these two, select both clips and make them last uh, here. So you want that um, a time when there is no movement, there is no animation, there is no scaling and no fading. So you want to give it a bit of space there. So it's going to actually show up, fade in and wait. Okay, so we're going to make it wait for about a second or so. So this is the part of the animation. This is the part that's not happening anything and the part where again nothing is happening after it's finished. Right, so let's see. Right? So that is the portion, this is the whole animation we want to replicate and duplicate as many times as we need. Now let's make it all uh, symmetrical, so I'm going to actually cut the start of it just a bit, like so. So now it's going to show up, boom, scroll, fade in and fade out, it's going to fade out and scale and then wait a bit and then we repeat that. Okay, so this is the main beacon animation. Now what you want to do uh, before you start copying this many times, you maybe want to change it into a reusable component. So let's add the finishing touches to this. I'm going to import a map. So go to my media bin, I'm going to drag a map from open maps on the screen just to, just to show the uh, effect. So I'm going to put this map on screen here like so and maybe scale it just to show a piece of this city here, London, okay. Um, if you choose to crop it, that is up to you. Hold down the Alt key and just crop the map, or maybe not, let's just, just animate the map too. So just to keep it more uh, interesting. So this is the part where I want to start here, let's suppose, and okay. So now, this map is of course on a separate track, so I'm gonna actually move it to a separate track of its own and put it at the bottom right there and of course you can see my beacon is on top of the map now depending on your animation maybe you want to make the beacon red yeah so let's make it red okay so I'm gonna select both of them and make uh, keep it keep the solid colors but then make it all red like this and select the bottom one that we are animating and make the outline red as well okay so there you go nothing else changes it's still pulsating like we've animated it and if you zoom in here, you can see it. Another nice touch you can add to this is add the drop shadows to make it like pop off the screen. So let's first select both of these and group them. Select both clips, not the map, and Control G to make them a single group, a single object. So this is very nice now because you can move it around on the screen. And before we repeat this, we make it uh, kind of repeat and, and, and do a loop, we can actually go to the visual effects and use the drop shadow on it. Just drag the drop shadow effect and you can see now how nice this is popping off the screen. You can change the angle of the drop shadow to be at the center or the sort of the bottom part. You can change the uh, 
opacity to make it darker and the blur to make it you know more or less prominent like this sharper and you can also change the distance so this is all you know very flexible like so so this looks very nice and realistic so you can see it's still part of the object I can move it around I can scale now the whole thing because it is a single object because of the group now watch this when you scale it the shadow may be actually too strong just make sure you kind of you know make it less blurry if you want and maybe change the opacity a bit it doesn't need to exaggerate the map the the shadow you just need to give it a little bit of visual you know suggest that it's actually raised from the surface of the map so there you go my beacon is ready it's still animating and pulsating right so now we want to repeat this so I'm gonna zoom out on my timeline and I'm gonna make the map um, clip much longer like 24 seconds doesn't matter so this is the clip now watch this in Camtasia 2021 you now have the ability to create quick properties to add quick properties to specific objects and this is not just for text elements you can use for this like for example look if my group is selected on the right side here you have group one properties and you can see you can change the color of the um, objects inside of the group without actually having to open the group and go in there and select each one of them and change the colors you can change the colors right here from this component so if I want to turn the whole thing into maybe green you, you see you just change it right here change the outline to green on the other clip that's your, your choice and now that is red which okay I need to change that one and if it's not available here you can click on this to add the extra properties because it's the outline let's call this red green there you go so both of those outline and fill are changeable now external to the component so this is very nice because you can add this now to your library and reuse it in other projects so if I right click on this add to library and I can give it a name pulsating beacon there you go and I choose the library that I want to put it in like that use the visible size not the canvas size because I just want the little object to be uh, to remember the size click OK so now you see it's here in my library so let's suppose that if I delete this from my project or I, I want to add it and again to another project all I have to do is go to my library click and drag a new beacon onto my timeline and it's playing now if this does Camtasia does this uh, it's a bug I've told them about it and I've shown a fix on my other videos but if you right click on this you notice that um, Camtasia does not correctly assess the size of the object uh, of the group and it groups crops it inside so this is a bug in my opinion because it should assess exactly the size so if this happens to you just right click on the group and say resize group to visible size so this is actually going to make it visible all the way it's because of the animation inside Camtasia does not correctly assess the size that objects need inside of the group when they are animated so anyway this, this is fixed now they're both pulsating so now if I zoom out of my map I have these two positions here let me just make it red again because it was nicer or purple or something all right let's I have a purple bacon here we go or pink whatever the color is I'm not good with colors so if I want to now uh, animate this further on my map actually you know what let me just get rid of the other one so this is the nice green one um, I'm gonna make it red that's what I wanted and the background is red the color is red here we go that is my beacon there so you have many options of using this for example if you want to keep the beacon in one place and animate the map around it that is up to you so if I want to show the beacon get traveling on this map here I want to put it in the middle move the map to that point maybe you need to scale the map to fill the whole screen so this is the part where I say you know start from here and end up there it's up to you now one thing you need to know when you use this and you need it to be on screen more than once you will have to make copies of it so you can copy this group 
control C and go to the end or use this um, use this this um, these buttons to navigate but this is only going to take you to the next one so if you go to the end of this clip control V to paste end of the clip control V to paste so we're basically copying and pasting this object in the same position that is important for the entire duration of your animation so you're gonna have to do this quite a few times it's okay right there so let's suppose that I want to stop my animation there I'm gonna expand the map to to include another one there so watch what happens now it should pulsate multiple times in the same place like that okay so this is one part now I don't want to if I need to move this around I don't want to actually move each one of them so you know select all of them now and control G to group them again so now you have a whole very long clip with a pulsating beacon on your timeline see look I'm moving all the way and it keeps doing it so now you're free to move it because it's gonna move all of them at the same time and they're all keep pulsating in the same position so if you need a longer one you can add this group to your library you have a longer animation with many beacons inside of it that repeats that beacon pulsating action so you can uh, put that in your library and then if you want to animate it let's go let's see uh, we're starting here and we're ending here I'm gonna add an animation shift and a add the animation to the group with the beacon and move the start of the animation right there uh, this is probably very long so I'm not I don't want to pulsate for 24 seconds so this is obviously too long let's say that we want to go about this long so bring the animation all the way down here and now let's move the animation in the other place so this is how you animate this beacon on a map it doesn't have to be on a straight line right click on the animation and change the easing to be linear this is important because if you're moving an object and then you have from A to B you want to move it it um, creates that default easing where it speeds up and slows down let me show you so if I go here it is moving and speeding up and then it's slowing down so if this is something you want that is great but you notice that my street there the one I'm, I'm, I'm animating this is not a straight line so if I want to adjust the animation along the way to fit in the right place then that's gonna mess with your animation because it's gonna create those speeding up and slowing down between each segment of the animation which is why I recommend you right click and change the easing of your animation to linear so watch what happens now the object is gonna move at a constant speed all the way through you see it's moving in a straight line but what I don't like is the fact that it's not respecting my road so I'm gonna go to the point where it needs to change direction and readjust it if I zoom in you're gonna see what I mean it's actually leaving the road here because the road is slightly so you just go into different points like here and just adjust the location on the road so what it's gonna do now it's gonna actually go perfectly along the road as it should go and this is even import more important if you need it to go and turn corners so <laughs> let me just show you you've gone here so now let's maybe zoom everything out using a animation so shift a on both clips and scale everything down all right like so and make sure I'm moving the object to where it needs to be in the corner there so that's gonna transition the whole thing and now if I want to continue this animation or create a new animation let's let's make it turn a corner and go at the top here okay so just to give you an example of how to use this component so I'm gonna start uh, let's suppose that I need it to be there shift and a on the beacon clip to add an animation put this animation make it longer like this again change the easing to linear and then the end of the animation actually needs to be there all right let's suppose this is where it needs to be or maybe actually let's make it more complicated let's put it on this corner right so now of course you notice that it's it's traveling in a straight line what I don't want that I want it to to go around the corners so I'm gonna go about 
let's say halfway through or slightly less, it's going to go to this corner and then again move kind of here and put it on this corner. So watch what happens now. It's traveling on that road, turning the corner, and then turning the corner. Okay, so even if you need to make more changes along the way, like here, just stop the animation in that point and adjust the location like that. This is very easy, right? So you're going to go just approximate the uh, sort of the distance it's traveling. So look at this. We have created a very nice animation showing people directions to get to some point or, you know, using the Camtasia beacon animation. You're zooming out and you're going further on, turning corners, keeping it straight on the same place. And the same principle applies if you actually want to move the map. So I'm going to show you another example of how to use this beacon. I'm going to actually just cut this short and bring the map again from the media bin here on screen. OK, let's move it there and scale, uh, you know, zoom in a bit like that. And I don't know, I'm going to just start and end in the center here. So let's suppose that I want to travel from this junction here to that port. It doesn't matter, just to give you an example. So let's bring in now from the library, okay, I'm going to bring the pulsating beacon from the library, just put it on top of the map. Notice the uh, beacon, I wanted to put it in the center. So if you zoom in there, you want to make sure that you are in the center of the canvas, like maybe like so. Um, you, you know the problem with the pulsating, the size, it's not fitting in there. So right click on this before you animate to canvas size, resize it. There you go. And let's make it, I don't know, let's make it red again or purple or something like that. It really is not important. So here we go. Oh, or, or you can have different colors. I mean, you know, so uh, for the, the pulsating beacon, you can have a, an orange, red kind of thing. Yeah. Nothing stopping you from making that beacon look nice. Okay. So I'm going to actually animate this beacon to go from this point on the map, sorry, I'm adjusting the map now to fit the location I'm starting, right? And then let's copy the the, the, the beacon a few times. Just go to the end, paste it. Um, Camtasia pastes it on the next available empty track. So you may want to move both of them at the bottom there to prevent it from pasting them underneath the map. So click on the one copy and paste and just go and do that a few times until you fill the necessary length of the animation with that exact beacon like this and expand the map there. There you go. So now I'm going to group this again like the same before. Group it and uh, you know I have the pulsating beacon many many times in here. So this time I'm not animating the beacon, I'm animating the map, right? Because the beacon is going to stay in the center of the screen. So that's another way to use it. Go to the map add an animation to it, go to animations, animations, custom animation, always with the custom animation. I'm telling you, once you learn how the custom animation works, you're not going to go back to all of the other pre-built animations because the custom one does everything. Right click on the animation, enable easing and change it to linear. So now the map is not doing anything, but I want to move the map to show me this, this location here, right? So that's the location. Again, as you, as you go now through the animation, you're going to see that the beacon actually loses position, of course. So what you want to do is when it reaches a point where it's wrong, right about here, just drag the, no, sorry, don't drag the beacon, drag the map to bring it in position like this. And let's see, oh, this is wrong here. Just adjust the map a bit, go back to this junction. So it helps if you go by junction because then you have some fixed points where you you need to adjust it just slightly do like this. So now let's see. You can see now the beacon is following the map very precisely. And at any point, if the beacon is not staying on the map, you can of course go and adjust the position right in that point. Just make sure it's roughly in the right place in the animation so that it doesn't speed up and slow down because if I'm adjusting the position here while the playhead is nearly at the, the end like this so if I'm here 
this is not the point to tell it, oh, sorry, you need to go around this band here because what's happening, it's going to go there and then it's going to slightly go back, you know, so you don't want to do that. You want to always adjust your position along the way to where it needs to be. So there you go. I mean, this is a very simple tutorial and I'm sure you probably knew all these, but uh, just to show you an example of how you can create very nice, interesting custom animations. So there you go, like that. So there's your beacon, there's your animation, add it to your library and reuse it anytime you like in your project. And this kind of be helpful to show, like if you're in a computer game and you want to show like, I don't know, trucker games or train games, you want to show like on the map where you've been, where you're traveling, you can have your game recording on one side of the screen and then you can have this kind of beacon slash map animation on another side of the screen to show your progress and show kind of where you are and where you've been and so on like this. So this is a very nice and reusable component. Thank you again for watching my channel and I thank you for your time and if you enjoy my tutorials make sure you uh, subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this. If you have any questions let me know in the comments and I usually make videos from interesting questions so if you have anything uh, you would like to learn from Camtasia or some animation you would like to reproduce I would be happy to give it a try. And if you have not updated to Camtasia 2021, it is worth it. They have a lot of new animations and new effects included and uh, new uh, ways to speed up your workflow and help you, including proxies, you know, proxy editing. So if you have not upgraded to 2021, there is a link in the description that will uh, allow you to upgrade and it will be supporting my channel because it's an affiliate link, but it's not, not no extra cost to you. Thanks again and I will see you on the next one.